actually going to collect cyan wood for the California Rare Fruit Growers Sign Exchange. And I have never done this. I've been going, this will be my third year going to the Sign Exchange, and I feel like it's time to get back to the community. So um, there is a nice little handout that you can download off the CRFG website, which is called Making the Best of the Sign Exchange, and it'll also be on a bunch of different listservs. I'm looking at part one, which goes into what you need to bring to the cyan exchange, and then I'm looking more about bringing cyan wood. So, um, first off, what is cyan wood? It's the New Year's growth that you can take and actually put onto an existing kind of rootstock. Rootstock? Yeah. So, um, in order to find out what you need, um, first off, you need rubbing alcohol, preferably 90% or better. These thingies, a rag, and oops, we got other stuff. A bag that is labeled, a Ziploc, and of course, like your sign. You can download the sign labels on the CRFG website on the sign exchange page. Um, six labels go on one page. You can actually print them onto this, the Avery self stick labels. And a good strategy is also to make your labels before you go out and do your sign cutting. So they're already pre put on your bags. I'm going to, before I, I do anything, I need to um, clean my tools with rubbing alcohol. And so I'm just going to clean this. And I have my friend here who's going to tell me when I'm doing things wrong. Do it so, do it, do it so fine, so fine. Okay, okay, good. Just cleaning them up. And so um, just kind of some basic kind of guidelines is you want healthy wood. You don't want to bring anything in that's diseased. Um, and then the other thing is you want to know that it's already fruited and you're sure that it's the variety that you say it is. So I know this tree. I bought this tree from Trees of Antiquity. Um, it's a moor park. It's actually fruited. I've tasted the fruit. You know, sort of like thumbs up, thumbs up. So I, when, I when I bring it to the Cyan Exchange, I can clearly label my bag as an apricot moor park, talk a little bit about it, give a little bit of description about the um, color taste and the season, and then also let them know uh, where it's growing. This one's in Richmond, California, where I live, and then also the original source. And it might be just a friend. And you might not know all that information, but the more information you can give to the next person, then the more likely they're able to decide if that's something you want to take home, blah, blah, blah. So in order to decide where, I mean, obviously you can think about your pruning requirements, but we've already done that here. Um, so I'm gonna take this one and the way that you can tell it's new wood is it's slightly different colored than the previous wood. Um, so you can kind of see those little knots. Do you want me to take it, should I take it all the way down here or should up here? Anyone? And a five to, what was it say, five to six inches or more? I can't, we have to fit in the bag. I want the size of a bag. Here, look at that. Look at that. This would be your guideline here. <laughs> so I'm going to take it and I'm going to actually snip it down here. Urgh, assuming my. That's a little bit big. That can kind of fit in there. Okay. Anything else I need to say? I think that's probably good for that one. Yeah, let's take a look at the, the scion here. <laughs> Yeah, that's you probably can see. That's bats, first. That's uh, first. That's young growth that we actually want to um, graft with, and then this has the little fruiting spurs that we won't use. So yeah, we can. That's what I was thinking. Off. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then that can go in the bag. I can go. That can go somewhere else or somewhere else. Okay. So here's a cutting from the apricot tree. The part in red shows the fruit spurs, which are not uh, good for cyan wood. And the part in the green, you can see that it's slightly different than the part below that, um, indicating that it's new growth. Um, preferably, the scions should be five to eight inches long and about as thick as a pencil, but smaller is okay. Okay, so we're going to do a mulberry bush now. Uh, once again, I clean my, sh my uh, pruners between, and it's good to uh, clean them off and let it dry so it actually can kill anything between. Um, so once again, you're looking for... Um, this year's growth and you want it defoliated so it's supposed to be dormant but mine's a little bit kind of confused right now it's right around the new year so this is a good time when they're dormant for the most part except this one's like i said <laughs> a little confused <laughs> we're just helping it along um so this is the new one you can kind of tell it, it changes colors right here and also branches so this is the second year and then down below is the third year so this is a fairly new bush um, and it has clearly labeled so I know it's a black mulberry bush and I got it from um, trees of antiquity and I have a nice label again with all that information 
When filling out the label, try to fill out as much as you can in the description category for the benefit of the other people at the sign exchange. Besides color and taste and season, some other things you may want to include are what is that particular variety good for? Is it a great canner or dehydrator or for preserves or does it keep really well? You might also include if it has any cultural significance and if you know the number of chill hours that would be great. I just looked online to get all the information about this particular variety. And I'm just going to take a piece, snap it, and uh, probably cut that in half so it fits in the bag and you've got a bunch of different mm, things for other people. Anything else you want to say? <laughs> there! Okay! Woohoo! In bag before we forget. Okay, so we're almost there. Once again, this is December 31st, so it's, the wood is dormant, so we're collecting it now, but we've got to store it until the sign exchange, which is going to be in a couple weeks. So I've got my Ziploc, and I'm just going to take a couple of splashes of water and just stick it in my Ziploc and seal it all up. Oops, yeah, I like these red-blue ones because I kind of feel it. And then I'm just going to stick it in my fridge, not freezer, fridge. And then we're going to leave it there until the sign exchange. Visit crfg.org in order to learn more about the Sign Exchange, as well as other services and resources provided by the California Rare Fruit Growers Association. And while you're at it, consider becoming a member of CRFG and get involved in a local chapter. There's some great benefits, including a number of tastings throughout the season.